Hello, today I want to walk through a project I've been working on lately called AnomStack. The idea here is for painless open source anomaly detection for your metrics. And this builds on top of Dagster and a couple of other open source libraries to do uh, orchestration. Um, so basically, the idea here is you define a metric batch, uh, which is basically just, you know, you bring your SQL uh, to, to define your metrics and a little bit of config um, to define each, each metric batch. And then what you get from that then is you get really good anomaly detection on your metrics. So this is like, could be business metrics. It could be, it could be any metrics really, um, you know, typical, typical metrics that you, you might be measuring as part of your business basically. And um, you, so you can, you can define your own SQL to do the metrics, or you can also define your own post, uh, your own cu custom Python function. Um, if it's, you know, if you want to, if it's not metrics that live in your database, but maybe metrics you want to scrape from somewhere or something like that. So I'll show the easiest way to kind of show this is as an example. So let me, there's, there's some examples here, uh, in the repository. Um, but what I'll do is I'll have a look at this, this GSOD example here to start. And this is basically, this, uh, is global surface summary of the day temperature that lives in, in BigQuery. And this is like a public BigQuery data set that's updated every day. And the idea here is like, this is our data, this is our data lake. We use BigQuery, say, as an example. Uh, obviously, an OMSTAC works with like Snowflake, Redshift, uh, whatever other, other data warehouse you're using. I'm just using BigQuery as an example. Um, and so the idea here is I just define my SQL, which defines the metrics. So in this case, we're just, we're filtering for US and UK weather stations. We're, you know, doing some joins. And we are deriving some metrics like average U.S. temperature, uh, minimum U.S. temperature, and so the idea here is eventually this gets built up into a metric batch, which is basically just we're just kind of uh, concatenating each each of these metrics on top of each other, and uh, you know a metric is basically a metric batch needs to be a has a, a row of each metric batch basically has to have a timestamp metric timestamp metric name metric value so just those three uh, columns and that's basically what defines a metric batch. So this could be any SQL that you're running on your 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 data warehouse. And as long as it produces a, a table that has those three columns and each you know each row is basically one metric, then it'll be ingested into uh, into an ARM stack. And so this is how you kind of define your metrics. So you bring your metrics and then there's a little bit of YAML stuff, you know, configuration here around you know, what database we're using BigQuery. Um, so it'll know to pull the credentials from your environment variable. Uh, this is, we're, we're writing it into the metrics table. So in, into the metrics table in the metrics data set, you can, you know, you can write each metric batch to your, its own table if you want, or you can have one single metrics table or, you know, whatever suits. Um, and just some other stuff around like, where's the model? So for each metric, there's going to be a model trained where are those models going to be stored. In this case, we're just using the Google cloud storage bucket. Um, and then there's the schedules, you know, how often do you want to ingest? How often do you want to train? How often do you want to score? These are just, you define some cron schedules for that basically. Um, and then this bit here is where you're, this is where you're making the link between telling it what the ingest SQL is. So the ingest SQL is the templated um, GSOD SQL we were just looking at that right next to it in here in the in the folder for the metric batch. And so once you've, once you've defined this now, uh, an ARM stack will, will kick off uh, four jobs um, primarily four jobs. There's like an ingest job, a score job, a train job, an alert job, uh, and then there's a plot job as well. Um, so how this works, it, like how this looks architecturally then is if we have a quick look in here, um, we'll see all the moving parts basically in the architecture here. So these are the user inputs we were looking at as an example. Um, and then at the core of it basically is the orchestration which, been, which has been done by Dagster. And there's different jobs. So there's an ingest job, which is just run the SQL, save it into the table, append it on. So this is just getting the metrics in. Uh, and there's a train job here, which will basically hit that metrics table, create, pull, pull in the, you know, enough training data based on the default parameters, train um, a model per metric, and then save the, save the models into the model store, which in the previous case was Google Cloud Storage Bucket. But it could just, it could be a local, you know, it could be local file system or it could be S3 or I think we're going to add Azure Blob Storage, or, you know, all these other places to, to be added. And then the score job will then pull the latest model and um, 
it'll it'll hit it'll pull the latest model, pull the latest metrics, and then score. You know, get you an anomaly score for each for each metric as well. And then if that if that score, there's alert job which will basically look at the the recent scores. And if the if the if the smoothed recent scores, you know, sort of rolling average of the recent scores, if that's beyond the threshold, then you'll get this alert. The alert will trigger uh, an email alert or Slack alert or both. You know, whatever. Um, and that's what you get into your inbox then. So that's like, that's a quick overview of the architecture. Um, there's also, there's a plot job here, which kind of lets you see some plots within Dagster in the logs so that, you know, visualization isn't the core here, but there is a few places where you can actually just look at the metrics and the scores in this, in the output of this plot job. Or it, there's also a, a dashboard. There's this little stream that dashboard that's running um, that can also query each metric batch. Um, I'll give you a quick example here. It is here, like it's basically just a, a very simple streamlit dashboard where you can look at all your your metrics. And in this case, these are just these are just like the random BigQuery uh, simple example metrics, which are just random numbers. But you can see uh, they're random, but then sometimes they 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 uh, they have an anomaly here. So we can see when the, when we had this dip, uh, the anomaly score went up, and that's kind of what 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 we're expecting. Um, and obviously, then your data sources, so it can read from you know BigQuery, Snowflake. Or Python or whatever, you know, Redshift. We have Redshift here as well. Actually, I just haven't updated the diagram yet. Um, and the end result then is you, you know, you, you, you define this. You can run this in uh, a couple of ways. So you can run this on, obviously, you can run it in GitHub code space if you want to just play around with it and get, get familiar with it. It'll just save save to a local file system. It'll use a local DB as the database. Um, but really, you can run it in Daxter Cloud. It's probably the easiest in a serverless manner. You can obviously... Um, Point Dagster Cloud at, at at your fork of this repository, and then as you make you know commits and PRs into your into your into the metrics folder, it would just be picked up by uh, by Dagster, um, Dagster Cloud. Or another option is to run it locally, so you can run it uh, yourself via Docker. So there's a there's a there's you know Docker Compose up. There's a couple of containers and um, and or you can also run it in a local Python env as well. So if you want to just run it as a, like a system service or whatever. Um, so that's a couple of ways to run it. Then the adding your own metrics real quick. There's an example here in the, in the repository of a PR that adds, adds, I added these Google Trend metrics recently. And just, like there's a PR example here where you're just, basically all you're doing there is, is just a simple PR to add your, add your, in this case, we're adding the SQL to define, you know, pull from the Google Trends data, do all the SQL, get the metrics, um, and then just some configuration here for, for, the, for this particular metric batch, like the schedule and the name, basically, is the main things. Obviously, then, in all the defaults, there is a, there is a lot of defaults that you can you can overwrite. Um, so within the within the metrics folder, there's you'll see there's a, a defaults. Uh, let me see. I'll go back. Um, it, all of your, basically, your, your metrics would live in the metrics folder. And in here, there's there's defaults in, in here so for everything there's a you can you can use any of these defaults and if, if they're not defined for each metric batch it'll fall back to the defaults basically so you can you can kind of customize as much as possible um, and likewise you can also customize um, even the pre-processing function itself there's a default pre-processing function here which is what the pre-processes the data before the training and the scoring in this case it's just using um, difference it's taking differences and it's smoothing and it's adding lags but you could you could define your own preprocess function and tell um, tell your you know that metric batch to use that one instead. For instance, that might be if you wanted to use like a preprocessing function that used day of week or time of day type features, you could you could just define your own one. But the idea is you shouldn't really need to do any of that to get decent enough anomaly detection. You shouldn't have to worry about that, you know. Um, but it's just nice that if you want it, you can. And so the end result then is like you have this running somewhere, and it's going to. Uh, ingest the metrics and write them back into your database, um, wherever that may be. And then when things look anomalous, you're going to get these alerts, basically, which in this case, um, there's, there's some real world examples in the anomaly gallery here. Um, but basically, it's an email. And the email has kind of like a, an ASCII art type summary of the data. And then also attached will be a plot here. So like I have an example, uh, I have an example here of, of a server um, from this morning. So this is a this is like a London, the server called London, and this is a system RAM, and it's the cached RAM value is what we're monitoring here. And this is just saying that it looked anomalous at this at this time. And you can see here, T0 is the most recent data. So um, what we have here is like the, the raw value of the metric, 
and we have then the the anomaly score kind of this this in this case it's a smoother anomaly score because we, we we don't want to just trigger on every spike we want to smooth it a little bit just to, so we're not too trigger happy um and then this star here is for stuff that's being flagged as anomalous and so you can kind of see here this is just it like a test text way to kind of look at the time series it, uh, there's also tags here if you wanted to have different rules if maybe you wanted to route these batches to a different filter in your email or you know tag them differently that's that's all in there and then attached to each uh, alert is the the plot of the alert itself so in this case we can see like the metric value is always around you know three and a half thousand um i guess that's probably three and a half gigabytes or something like that and it's we saw it dropped but it, and a, a little bit of a, a peak in the anomaly rate but actually not 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 sufficient to pass this threshold the default threshold is 80 percent and and this is the smoothed score, so it's not just an individual score. That's why there's a little bit of a lag here, you can see. When it does eventually drop uh, and then goes back up, it's not until kind of the, the next the next timestamp that we have the smoothed score. This goes up enough to, to trigger the threshold. These are all parameters you can play with and stuff, but the, the defaults should generally be useful enough. Um, and so that's the idea here is we get this email, we, we look at this plot and we see, yeah, if there's a drop in RAM, you know, is that something I care about or not? Um, it's up to you then you can decide whether you want to take action or not basically or just move on and then yeah so the idea is in your in your in your inbox you have now basically a, a stream of pretty decent anomaly detection based on your metrics coming into your into your into your inbox or you know whatever uh system you want to use slack or any other tools um so yeah that's a quick that's that's like a quick really quick overview of what's going on here and um, the readme has a lot more information um and we're basically looking you know if you, if you want to help out we're looking for contributors we're looking for people to start using this i've been using it myself the reason i built this is i've, I've built versions of this <laughs> probably five or six times now uh, i've either built this internally myself in in like every job i've been in or i've also bought you know purchased these modern data stack uh tools that are also kind of useful as well but really um there's no reason why we shouldn't have a decent anomaly detection system that's easy to sort of self-host or deploy yourself without, you know, any major infrastructure overhead or anything like that. It's, this should be a, basically a solved problem by now. So I kind of got fed up doing this every time I went um, into, you know, maybe doing, you're doing, looking after business analytics or in, internal metrics for, for companies. I decided to just build this tool so that, um, you know, I think it could be something that you, somebody could, somebody who's not necessarily um, a software engineer, but actually knows how to write the SQL, knows how to, you know, define some of these things. Um, the idea is it lowers the barrier to you to just kind of bring your, bring your, you define the metrics, do some configuration, and the nom stack will do the rest. Basically, that's the idea. So yeah, uh, feel free to check it out. Um, uh, any feedback would be would be great. Thanks a lot.